couple of weeks ago, I had a young man call uh, Steer Restaurant 101 and ask us how we uh, begin horses, how we start horses, and uh, I want to preface that a little bit because, you know, I would never recommend for you as a beginner to try to start a bulldog and horse. I mean, it's too much involved with to start with. Uh, even if you're an uh, excellent horseback rider, uh, try to find an old horse uh, that's in your price range that kind of babysits you through that first uh, six months, year. Uh, you'll get some good out of him. Uh, you may have to pay a little bit more than you want. Find a good horse. There's no such thing as a, as a, a horse that's lost a step. Uh, there's no such thing as a horse that, uh, that's not going to give you an optimum uh, catch every time. There's no such thing as a horse that works bad in the box, but he's good in the field. So find those. They're hard to find, but try to find something that's going to fit you and work for you. And, and that's, that's number one. Now, that being said, you're going to want to move up to something a little bit, a little faster, a little better horse, a little better quality uh, as you get into this bulldog. And hopefully you, you've progressed that much and you want to do that. Uh, this is more talking to those guys. So let's, let's talk about starting a horse. First of all, if I'm starting with a horse, I want to start with something that's got some cow in it. I want to start with more of a cow horse, quarter horse type horse. Uh, a little thoroughbred doesn't hurt. I mean, I know a lot of these guys have got some uh, thoroughbred lines that they're using uh, just for the speed, but uh, you want something that's actually going to go to a cow that's got some cow in it. Now, uh, you know, some of these horses are cut and bred and stuff like that, and, uh, and, and they work also. We've had, we've, had, we've had several horses that we've trained that have been, you know, really good cow horses. And uh, another thing is, if they've been ridden on cattle a good while, that's awesome. I mean, you can... Uh, if they've been in a, on a, like on a ranch or something, and uh, don't try to start horses that are too young. You know, you get a three or four year old horse, it's just, his mind's not there, he's just, he's not settled enough most of the time. Now there are exceptions to that, and I know there's guys that would, I mean, if you ask for different opinions, they'll say, say that, but most of those good steer wrestling horses, I mean, we don't get the really good out of them until they get around 10 years old or so. And so, you know, eight or 10 in that area. And they'll go for a long time because these horses are running straight lines. So don't worry about it. if you if you're a, a young person and you're trying to find that first horse. Don't worry about going out there and, and uh, buying a 17, 18, 19 year old horse because if they're sound, uh, you'll get three or four, five years, good good years out of them. So I mean, uh, most of those horses uh, they they they've been around a while. They know how to take care of themselves. So also uh, when you're looking at horses. Uh, you know, look for horses that, that have a lot of common sense, something that you can get on and ride, that they, they're, uh, you know, they drop their head when you give them the head, they, uh, you know, they ride well. Uh, don't be afraid of horses that's got a lot of gas, a lot of, a lot of power and, and, and a lot of go, but you also want them to be able to relax a little bit. So make sure when you're looking for that horse, find something like that. When you first start your horse, you want to make sure that you warm him up properly. I see a lot of guys are trying to train horses, and the horses still got too much energy. They still they're not in the work mode, and I like my horse to be in the work mode. So make sure that when you're doing that, you you get out there and ride him down. I mean, get him where he's a little bit tired. He'll start to pay better attention to you and take you less time when you're training. If you've got him a little bit tired, I've seen guys do everything from riding the pasture to get your head right to riding up hills to. Uh, you know, just make sure that you're doing what it takes to get that horse down. I've even seen log horses before, even bulldog horses, take them, take them pull a log a little bit. Just get them tired enough to where they're working properly. Okay, then when you start, here's the thing I'd like to see you do. Start off walking like I've got this dummy here, and what I like to see you do is just walk by these dummies, get them comfortable with them, ride your horse up there, pat the dummies, <coughs> be horseback, lead them by, you know, if you have to, if you have to just time beside them, whatever, so that they quit paying attention to it. Because what you want them to do is just totally not pay attention to the dummy and pay attention to what they're doing in their work. Once we start, I like for them just to lead the horses by, and I mean just actually lead the, lead the bulldog and horse by the dummy. You put it against the fence, uh, about this far from the fence, and then let the horse go by. Just lead the horse by. Get him comfortable, lead a guy by on him, let the guy sit there on top of the horse, pat, pat the dummy. These horses will booger a little bit, especially if they're not used to something like that. I mean, this is something strange to them. You know, they're going to try to flight. And then, so you just want to make sure that you're, that you're trying to calm that horse as much as possible. Once you're doing that, and you can start getting off, 
Make sure that you fix a little trap. Make sure that the that the, the dummies, like I said, about this far from the fence. Put a barrel out in front of the out in front of the steer, uh, probably about 15 foot in front of the steer, where you got plenty of time for the horse to walk and just walk him by, lead him by. Let some, and put a barrel, a 55 gallon drum, sprinkle a little feed on that barrel. That's really important. You been making that step. He'll go. He'll come. He'll start walking by. By. He'll come. He'll he'll walk up here. Guy gets off. He's going to see the. See, he'll go to that feed, and it, it's ne it's never failed. These horses forget about when they got that feed there. They relax, and they'll go to that feed. They'll get them a little bite or two. Don't let them eat too much, and it's and then lead them back around. And that's a good way to keep your horse relaxed. And then he'll start going to that spot. And what I like to, and once you start doing that, they'll start feeling the, the weight shift on these horses. Now that's important because you want that horse not to take a left when you get off, but make a step when you get off. And what that means is that horse is walking up here, he's going to walk into, he's going to run into the hole, and then when he feels that weight shifting with that saddle horn and that weight shifting, and that cowboy getting off, he's going to make one step and move. What it does, it leaves, leaves your feet right here. But you don't want him to just stay in there. Because if he does stay right there, or he comes to the right, it puts your feet in an awkward position. I've seen more guys get their knees messed up because they hit wrong because the horse is either cutting them off or not giving them their feet anywhere to go. So once you've done that, you've led this horse by, he's comfortable. You just get somebody, anybody can do it, just lead him by, go to the, go to the barrel, let him get a little feet. And then you, what you want to do is just start riding him by on your own. He, that helps the horse take ownership of what he's doing. It's just like you and your bulldogging. I want you to always take ownership of your bulldogging. I want you to be the one, but let that horse do the same thing. Let him relax, walk in there, you ride him in there. Let him relax, walk him by, get off on the dummy. Let him make that little step. If he's not making that step, tug on him a little bit until he counterweights you. And then make him make that step, go to the dummy, and when he, or to the barrel. And when he goes to the, to the barrel, let him stand there. You take your time. You caught the steer, you finish what you, your business, you walk back over there, get him, and do that over and over until he gets to where he doesn't think anything about it. And that's how you start on a dummy.